welcome CSE 103 class to our polygon input exercise. Now this is number 15 for this semester for spring of 2018. That may change in the future, so I'll try not to point out the 15 too much, but that's the one we're using right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a polygon by inputting values. And we're going to start off with four variables to make a polygon. We have to know the size, and that's each side of the polygon is going to have a particular size. So we're going to have size, we're going to have sides based on how many sides, because a polygon can have three or more sides, and then also the angle, because what happens is after we draw a line, we have to turn and make an angle, and depending on that angle, that will be the type of shape that it'll be. And if you remember, we did a stop sign, and we did a 45 degree angle, and we had to use some math to figure that out. So we basically go 360 divided by the number of sides to figure that out, and we'll also put in a color. and We'll let the user figure that out. So we're going to start this from scratch, but let me just look at a sample just so you see where we're going here. And it's going to have a user input down here in a little terminal kind of area. And the user is going to enter a size, and I'll just put in 50 so it's not so big. And then the user will hit return. And sides, let's make a hexagon. I'll put 6. And we'll enter a color. I'm going to put in teal. And I'll hit enter and it made a teal polygon. And that's exactly what we want. So it's nothing too difficult, but we do have some code we have to work on here, and then we're going to make a function and then run a function or call a function. So we're going to start this from scratch, so I'm going to go into Trinket, and I'm going to start off with my import turtle, which we start off with to import the turtle model, and then I'll kind of make an extra space here, and I'll just put a comment, and I'll just put variables, and this is where I'll start my four variables. And I'll start them as kind of absolute values, and then we'll change them to input. So again, I'm going to have a variable for size, and I'll just make it 50 for now. I'll just put a, a, a value. And then I'll put sides, and I'll make it 3 for now, because that's kind of the smallest polygon we can use. And then we're also going to need angle. And if it was 3, the angle would be, well, I don't know, what would the angle be? Actually, the angle is going to be 360 divided by sides. That way, it'll always work out, no matter how many sides we put in. If we put four sides, it'll be 360 divided by 4, which will be 90. If we put in 3, it'll be 120. If we put in 8, it'll be 45. So it'll always work out. So that's our little formula to know what angle we should use to actually make it after it makes a side. And then also, a last thing we'll put in is color. And I'll just use CLR just to, to shorten it a little bit. And I'll make it red for now, because that's the easiest to type. And it's showing up with that because it has to be a string, so make sure I put it in quotes. And those are our variables. And then we're going to basically define a function. So we're going to start our function here, and I'll just put, I'll put define function so we know we're defining it, because we're not calling it yet, we're just defining it. So we're going to say define function. And then we're going to define it by using the DEF. And then we'll give it a name. And we'll just call it draw polygon. And we're going to use an underscore. You don't want to use a space in there. You could use a capital P and get rid of the underscore. You don't want to use a dash either. We try to avoid dashes because they could get misconstrued with minus signs. So we're going to leave that alone. And then we also need an opening and closing parentheses. We're not putting any arguments in there right now. We might, but for now we're not. And then we also need a colon. So we need to put a colon there to indicate that that's kind of, that anything after here is going to be part of the function. And then when you hit return, it'll basically indent for you so it keeps everything inside the function. Now to start off our function, we're not actually going to create an instance of a new turtle. We're just going to use kind of a generic turtle that comes in automatically. So we're just going to use turtle in our function here. We're going to say turtle dot, uh, we'll use forward, because that's what we usually do. So we'll say turtle dot forward. And then we'll put in the variable that we have here, size, because that's how far he's going to go. So we'll put in forward size. And then I'm going to hit enter. And this time we'll go turtle dot left, because that's the way he turns. He's going to turn left. And then we're going to have to put the angle in there. And we can just write angle, because remember, angle is the variable that represents this value here, which is actually going to be whatever it may be, depending on how many sides we have. So whatever it happens to be. Right now, it would be 120, because it would be 360 divided by 3 is 120. So that's what happens right now. And before I do anything else, I could even, I could even get out of here. And I'm going to kind of go back, so I'm not, I'm not indented anymore. And I'm going to 
save this and I'm going to call it 15 and I'll call it polygon input and I'll just call mine uh, I'm just going to put a V here now because I'm recording it for a video so that's what dash V is okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it and I'm going to run it now nothing happens right now because we have a function and we haven't called the function so we have to basically call the function so I'm going to put a comment here just to let me know that this is how I call the function and to call the function you basically just you just rewrite the function name again so it's just draw not function it's draw polygon and that's all you have to do so what's going to happen it's going to import the turtle module it's going to set these variables declare these variables or it's going to define the function then it's going to call the function so when it gets to here it should run the function so let's see what happens and forward I put size size equals 50 let's see what error we have down here invalid type object has no attribute forward For, oh I spelled forward wrong all right so I spelled that wrong I was thinking I had the wrong statement in there let's run it this time and that's all it does it just goes forward and it turns and you can see it's actually turning so it's going to make a triangle it's actually turning 120 degrees now what we have to do is run this an X number of times if it was a triangle it would run it once and then a second time and a third time and the way we did that was using something called a for loop so we're gonna run a for loop and I'll do it right after here and it's basically for I in range and then you just put the number of times so I'll use now I'm not going to use three because I have sides up here so whatever sides I use I'll just replace that with the variable side so I don't want to put an absolute number in there that's why we make these variables so we could just plug them in here and then we could change them up here so it's going to run for for I in range sides and then I have to put a colon here and remember when you do that it's easy to miss this because we already are indented but you need to indent it again for that loop you need to tab these over and make sure they're indented a second time because these two statements here are only running in the loop and even anything that happens after this or before it are not going to be indented they'll only be indented at this line so just be careful with that so let me save this and let me run it and there it actually works now what do we need to to keep doing this well we need to have a begin fill we need to have an end fill we need to specify a color we didn't specify a color so we're going to do that so let's go here and we'll put it right inside our function we'll just do turtle dot we could give it a color right away so let's give it a color now we're using we're going to do turtle dot color because that's its actual property but inside here we'll use the variable CLR because we don't have to put red in there because it's just going to use whatever CLR represents so turtle dot color now you, you can use color again but sometimes that gets confusing so we use CLR to represent color so remember our variables always represent what we have up here so now it should make a red triangle and we can save it and just see what it does although we're not done yet and you can see it makes a red triangle now it doesn't fill it because we have to do the begin fill and then after it's done we have to do the end fill now remember the end fill is going to be after it's done drawing so we're going to have to just go back out to here so notice be careful of where things are indented so this has to go back out so the only things being indented a second time are the parts in the range when it's actually drawing the triangle now we could go back out and we could do turtle dot end fill and we'll try it out and if we wanted to hide the turtle at the end we could even hit return here and do turtle dot hide turtle and then hides the turtle and notice we're just using a default turtle we're not using the turtle looking turtle it's just a little arrow so now if we change size here if we make it a hundred and I run it now it makes a larger triangle if I change the sides and I make five it should make a pentagon and if I change the color and make it green it'll change it that way but again by doing that I'm just changing code all the time which is no fun we want to actually make it not that it's a whole lot of fun but we're gonna make it so that the user can enter what these values are so that they can kind of participate in it rather than us just changing code which isn't a whole lot of fun so we have everything in place here now we're just gonna update our variables so that they're input so for size we're gonna let the users input everything here not the angle because the angle is being determined based on the sides but they can input the color down here they can input the size and they can import the size so all we have to do is just put input spell it right and then in parentheses we're just going to put a, a string 
called choose the size and we should put a colon here and then I'll put a quote and we're going to get rid of the number we're not going to have the number here anymore and we'll finish off the parentheses and then same thing with sides and I could even I could even copy this if I don't want to type it again and we'll do the same thing we'll just put number of sides and some people put in you know great between 3 and 10 or something like that you could do that just to kind of have them make sure they're not going outside of those ranges and then also I'll I'll do this again I'll copy this down here for color and I'll say choose the color now they're not really choosing it I'll put enter a color because that's what they're doing and I'll make sure I keep my colon here and that should be all I need so I'm gonna save it and I'm gonna run it and I'm gonna enter a size and I'll just go down here and you have to click here and I'll put 50 and I'll hit enter or return choose the number of sides and I'll make it I'll make it 8 like a stop sign and I get an error and it has a problem making an angle and the reason is we've done this before is well actually let's just look at our error code it says unsupported operand type div int and string now it's looking for an int and it's getting a string a string is basically a word um, it's basically text meaning it's not using a number so for sides it's very important that this is a number the size it seems to you know be fine with it but because sides is being used in a mathematical equation here it's getting confused so 50 it knows to draw 50 but when you put in a number of sides it doesn't know how to kind of do math with that so since we're doing math with sides we have to make sure it's an integer and we're not going to use float we're going to use integer so that there's no decimal in it so if we use float it actually wouldn't work so we have to use int and we'll just wrap the whole thing uh, with int around it so you'll have two parentheses at the end so so int will be basically holding everything, our first statement that we just did for sides. And then it's going to translate that as a number, and then that number will be able to do math, and it'll move along. Input for color we don't have to worry about because that's not, that doesn't have to be a number. But this has to be an integer for this one here. This one needs to be an integer too, but it's not doing any math, so it has no problem just writing 50 and drawing it. There's nothing else happening here. So let me just save this and make sure this, this updates. And I'll do a size of 50. And number of sides, I'll, I'll put 8 again. And I'll put red like a stop sign. And there's our stop sign. There's our polygon. So this is exactly what we want. And you could just try it out. And you could just rerun it each time. And there's different things you could do. You could put in conditional statements to make sure that it doesn't go below 3 and all kinds of different things. But just this is all you need for exercise uh, polygon input, or what's considered 15 right now. So again, I'll just put in a size of 75. I'll put in number of sides. I'll put 9. And I'll put a teal color. And this should make some kind of nanagon, I believe, with 9 sides. And there it is. It's going off the page a little bit. So we'd have to, you know, the size shouldn't really be that big. If we do 100, some of these, some of the ones that have more sides on them get very big. But that's all we need for this particular exercise, polygon input. This is all you really need, which is setting four variables. And then we're applying inputs to them. Sides needs an integer, needs an int wrapped around it so that it is a number. And then all we're really doing here is just writing a function called draw polygon with general turtle. And we have a for loop in here to make sure it's doing something a certain amount of times. And it's actually doing it whatever amount of times we decide here. Whatever they put in for sides is the number of times it's running that so that it always come, kind of comes around with the angles and finishes like a closed polygon. So that's it. And then again, this is just the calling the function. It needs to run with this. If this wasn't working, if you commented that out and you ran it, nothing would really happen. You'd go in here, you'd still be able to put in these sides because these are variables. So I could still put in 50. I could still put in 3. I could still put in red. But then nothing's going to happen because it's not running the function. So that's why you have to make sure you call the function. I could say running sometimes, but it's it's calling the function, I guess, is the proper name. But that's it. So you can save that. And then remember, when you're done, you're going to share this. You can go to link, and you want to copy this here. And you could do a Control-C or a Command-C if you're on a Mac. You could copy that. And then when you go back, so you'd want to go to Polygon, Polygon Input. Now, I already have one here. And I can actually put another one if I want. But what you're going to do when you go to this Add a Comment, I could add a second comment here. You're just going to go in here and make sure you do an Insert Link paste it in here. It could go twice like that and make sure you target new window and you hit OK. 
and even if you make this a little bigger, even if you go up to 10 or 12, that's fine, and you could save it. And now I have it just kind of added it to the same comment thing. Whether you edit that, you can edit the first one or you could add a second one. It puts it all in the same box here. And now what happens when I go to look at your exercise, I'll click on it here and it'll open up and I'll get to run it and try it out and get to make all kind of neat polygons. So that's polygon input. That's all you have to do for exercise 15 for your CSE 103 class.